I'm here with Nat Skinner. Thanks for joining us, Thanks, Nat. Katrina. So Nat's up from Melbourne for the day. Now Nat is a wine author, writer, um, TV personality, and now the face of First Choice Liquor. Yep. So I did want to just start by asking you about that role, and yeah, I know sure. you're going to be down in the uh, next week at the Cup, yep. doing a four-day stint at Melbourne Cup. Yeah. So what are you going to be doing down there? Well, I'm going to be looking in people's estimates ah. and seeing. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got that Sneak. glamorous job. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing what they're eating and drinking, okay. most importantly. And just having a look, we'll be in all the different sections. So general admission, car park, bird cage, like really just having a good look at good what people are drinking. Right, you'll yeah. see some interesting sights, well, I would imagine. I imagine, but we're doing it early in the morning, <laughs> okay. so it'll be safer. <laughs> Pretty neat. <laughs> That's right. Okay, and in terms of your personal style, yeah. how would you describe that? <laughs> it's probably elegantly scruffy. No, I, I, I don't know. Look, I, I'm... I'm uncomplicated I'm you know I love simplicity I like practical things I guess in terms of I love cooking and I love obviously love my my passion for wine has led me to food right. and I find the older I get the less complicated I like things I like you know good honest flavors and I like in my wine and my food I like really uncomplicated things and I, that tends to sort of resonate throughout my life really okay and if you were a drink, if you had to describe yourself as a drink, what would you be and why? Oh gosh, again, it would be probably something pretty simple, but <laughs> it would probably be a good gin and tonic, okay. I reckon. Nice. It would be yep. probably Hendrix gin, fever tree tonic, What's nice nice little bit of cucumber, Okay. away we go. Do you have a particular secret to making the perfect gin and tea? A large amount of gin. Okay. <laughs> That'll, that'll do it. Does that work? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and in summer, apart from gin and tonics, yeah. do you have a favourite style of drink to oh, sip? Yeah, I reckon, you know, look, I, I constantly find myself gravitating towards Riesling. Yep. And I just can, can I wish people would drink more Riesling, yeah. as we all do. Yes. Um, but, you know, look, I, I love kind of, uh, all the 2012s are arriving at the moment. I love the fact that there's this lovely austerity to those wines when they when they first hit the market. They're mm -hmm. fresh, they're vibrant, and they, they're really thirst quenching as well. Rose too, I think we're we're moving in the right direction in, yeah. with rosé getting drier and we keep talking about more textural you know I, I, I I'm blown away by how far we've come as as a producer of that style of wine in the last half decade absolutely and coming from Melbourne I know you spoilt for choice for great places yep. to drink do yep. you have somewhere favorite yeah like I do go? my favorite we, you're right we have got so <laughs> many great places in Melbourne to drink my favorite place to drink is my backyard oh nice. and I just it's just purely because I, lo I love being home yep. um, and I travel a lot and uh, I'm always happiest when I'm in my backyard, when my barbecue's going. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've got a cold glass of wine or a cold gin and tonic or a cold beer, and um, I've got the family around. Sounds good. And no dual policy. <laughs> that's it. That's right. And I'm allowed to wear bare feet. That's right. That's right. <laughs> now, look, we're obviously coming into the festive season yep. where people are, you know, buying their sparkling and champagne. Yep. What styles are you seeing? Um, anything really good value or anything interesting from First Choice that you can I guess, look, about? you know, we, we talk a lot about Sauvignon Blanc and the fact that we're drowning in an ocean of Sauvignon Blanc at the moment. But the good things are the 2012s are all arriving and they're fresh and you know I, I don't think that style looks you know better than as soon as it, it lands. And so there's a lot of great 12s coming through at the moment. Um, rosé sales are going up, yep. which is great. It's a good thing to see people, you know, as much as we love rosé and we talk about it, you know, I love the fact that consumers are now buying into it as well. Sure. Um, Gris and Grigio continue yep. to rise. Where that goes, who knows? Um, and then the quality of domestic sparkling wine. I don't think it's ever been in better shape either, so it's great to see people investing there. Perfect. And in terms of red wine drinkers, um, as, as the weather warms up, yep. um, is there a particular style you'd sway those people to that want to keep drinking their well, reds? I'm a, I'm a big Pinot fan, yep. so I sort of try to push them there, but obviously the, the, the difficulty is finding great value Pinot at yep. a price, and that's like the holy grail, I yes. think. Yep. So we're constantly looking for those kind of wines. I love the fact that people like Steve Weber are pushing the boundaries with Gamay now and trying right. some new and interesting things. And mm -hmm. same thing, Gary Mills at Jam Sheet as well last year with his Cab Franc. I thought that was a really interesting wine. So they're you know, things that are sort of lighter and fresher. And I guess just as a rule, we're starting to see a lot of wines coming into the market, young reds, without the influence of oak. And okay. with sort of lower alcohol levels, I think those wines work particularly well in warmer weather and with with barbecues. Right. Anything that's been charred within an inch of its life. Okay. <laughs> you know. And in, I have to ask, yep. what are your thoughts on ice cubes in <laughs> wine glasses? Personally, it's not my thing, but yep. at the same time, you know, I'm 
happy to see people drinking wine. And if it works for them, great. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> um, and final question for you, Matt. If uh, someone wanted to experiment this summer with yep. a, a style of drink they hadn't tried before, a particular wine, what would you be recommending them towards? Well, I'm constantly, you know, I'm, a, I'm probably com- preaching to the converted, but I'm constantly trying to get people to drink more Riesling. Okay. I'd love to see people drink more Riesling. There's still the hang up about, you know, the legacy that's been left behind by the 70s and the 80s yep, of everybody's yep. preconceptions <laughs> that it's sweet. Um, Riesling would be one. And then alternative varieties as well. I'd okay. love to see people drinking more Vermentino. You know, and we're starting to do some interesting things with that variety mm-hmm. here in Australia as well. Sauvignon, even small, you know, okay. smaller again, but obviously with the whole mix up with Albarino, yes. you know, years ago, and um, it'd be interesting to see more people doing that. I think those, those, both those two wines work particularly well with the kind of foods we eat at this time of year. Okay. And particularly shellfish and you know, piece of fish grilled really simply. Yeah, perfect. Any particular regions you like best for Riesling? Oh, I'm a massive fan of the Clare, and okay. I think you know those those Clare wines. As soon as they hit, I think look fantastic as mm-hmm. the 12s do it a lot of the 12s do at the moment but tassie increasingly and i think you know the one thing i love about what i've seen out of tassie so far with riesling is that there's a sort of a germanic kind of twist to a lot of the wines there is a bit of residual sweetness but they've got that lovely delicacy between sweetness and acidity and yeah. i think that works so well so okay. yeah really and excited about that, thank that you and tell us sorry i know i said that was my last question i have one more <laughs> um i know you you've got a book uh, that has previously been published but it's coming out paperback in a couple yeah. of weeks. Um, heard it through the grapevine okay. which was my last big book and so that was out sort of a few years ago now but being re-released in paperback and okay, you know it, it was the most enjoyable book to write and I'm really excited that, that it's coming out in paperback because it's probably the most relevant book in terms of how people can get more out of their wine experience okay cool without doing a whole lot yeah and you can pick that up i'm assuming at first choice and yeah and it'll be bookstores and vintage yeah. sellers first choice liquor land okay. and coles great yep. all right well thanks for chatting thanks, to Katrina. us good luck at the cup thank you <laughs> cheers